Let me tell you a story. I recently moved from the East Coast to the West Coast for job opportunities, needed something different, middle of pandemic ideas that pop into your head, and uh, this is the story of that. This is the story of my journey. The first thing that I did, which I guess is one of the last things you saw me do in my old apartment, is pack up all my stuff. This is what my apartment looked like, completely empty. It was devoid of all of my belongings because I had stuffed them into the back of my van. And I did this all in one day, all by myself. There I am, so proud of myself. And then the next morning I just got in my van and drove away. And it's a crazy feeling. And you're full of anxiety and nerves, but also excitement and also questioning why you did it in the first place, but now it's too late to back out now and it's time to just get over it and get excited about it. I have actually done this multiple times before. I spent four years living in the city of Chicago, Illinois, and then I spent three and a half years living in Seattle, Washington, and then I spent three and a half years in Providence, Rhode Island. It seems like three years is kind of my limit at this point. And then I start to get really antsy about moving somewhere else. Um, but I'm also getting older and probably going to end up back where my family is all gathered at some point soon. So I wasn't too uh, unaware that I was going to have these feelings. It's something that I've experienced before. And it is something that I would recommend everyone try. Just packing up all of your stuff into the back of your vehicle and driving away. It's a crazy feeling. Plus I was excited to get to my first destination, which was Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The row houses are something that I feel like there's not really anything like this anywhere else in the country of the United States. Uh, they're so tall and narrow and close to the street. It's a completely different vibe than you'd get in New York City or any other big city. They just have this look that's so Philadelphia. And this is one of so many bridges that I saw. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> For whatever reason, I really wanted to see the Liberty Bell, which is kind of what sparked me wanting to go to Philadelphia in the first place. So of course, that's the first place that I went when I got to the city. I did not take what is known as a belfie, though, which would be a selfie with the bell. But I did see Benjamin Franklin in the visitor center and I took this wonderful, beautiful picture with him instead. And then of course, you're in one of the most historic places in the United States. So you gotta do some historic sightseeing, such as seeing Independence Hall, which is where they signed the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And you know, Chinatown is very American as well. So I had to check that out. This was my favorite building that I saw. I love when buildings reflect the sky. And this is one of those many bridges that I was talking about, but the more fascinating detail here is this guy. Just biking along casually. But anyways, back to the bridge. <laughs> I found them to be very impressive. And like I said, everywhere. I crossed bridges when I was leaving Philadelphia. And I left there right as the sun was setting. So of course you got the great golden hour light while going through the countryside of Pennsylvania. And I had no idea that Pennsylvania is so mountainous. There was a lot of driving through the mountains themselves, through these tunnels. And I always loved driving through mountain areas because of that. And because on the other side, it opens up and you get this gorgeous view. I mean, come on, look at that. That's so pretty. Good job, Pennsylvania. Oh my gosh, these mountains though, they're like out of a painting. Sunset just keeps getting better. Keep getting better. And I got to a hotel for the night and that was my first night out on the road as a nomad, I guess. I guess I was nomadic at this time for a good six weeks. Uh, day one down, day two, I started off to Pittsburgh. To get to Pittsburgh, of course, you have to drive over bridges and drive under bridges. Lots of different kinds of bridges. <laughs> All of the different kinds you could imagine. The whole state was very picturesque. I was happy that I spent time to explore around a little bit. I don't know 
that I ever would have gone through Pennsylvania like I did had I not been driving from the East Coast westward. Another thing I was surprised about with Pennsylvania is how much water there is around, and especially the cities were surrounded or, uh, I guess, laced with different waterways, and especially Pittsburgh, they have these gorgeous parks that are right up against the water, and then, surprise, there's bridges all over the place to connect the different parts of the city over the water. In Pittsburgh specifically, they had painted a lot of these bridges yellow, which was very cute and added some brightness to the beautiful sunny day that I got. And of course, I had to go over one of these bridges. Had to do it. Also because the city was on the other side and I really wanted to check out that gorgeous skyline. I don't really have much to say about this, except that it was a beautiful day and the city is really nice and clean. And there were people walking around everywhere. It felt really safe. I could definitely see living here <laughs> for a few years. Uh, I think that it would have been great to go to college here if somebody's considering it for a, a few years in school. That would be a really fun experience, I bet. This was my favorite building that I saw until I saw this building, which was very reflective of the sky and had this mirrored effect. So even when you were driving around, you could see lump in the reflection itself. And it wasn't just one building. It was a whole kind of campus of buildings that was surrounding this plaza. I felt like I was in Oz. It seems like Oz. It's like the Emerald City. That's it. I also found out afterwards that there's actually, in the wintertime, an ice rink in the center of these buildings, and they light it up really nicely for Christmas time. And in the sunsets, it also looks excellent because it reflects the sky so well. This is the kind of building that I was expecting to be in Pennsylvania. Just big, brick, old-looking establishment buildings. So there was a lot of that as well. This kind of building does not impress me. It's just not my style, I guess, but there is a lot of that there too, if you're into that. Another thing that they have, besides bridges, is the stadium where the Steelers play. And there were a lot of people walking around in Jersey, so I don't know what was going on, but sports. I don't even have any comments for this. I don't know what to say about it. I was here for like 10 minutes waiting for these geese to leave the room. <laughs> They're very confident. I'm sure people feed them. Look at this guy. He's got no cares in the world. Real reason I went to Pittsburgh though was to go to the Andy Warhol Museum. I'm a huge fan of Andy Warhol and have been for some time. So this was one of the main reasons that I wanted to get to Pittsburgh. I didn't actually take any video in the museum itself, but I have some photos of a few of my favorite pieces. This was actually a film I thought it was super cool, and I stood there for the entire 11 and a half minutes of it. It was of these two women playing a double-sided guitar, and sometimes they would both be playing it, sometimes one of them would be playing it, sometimes one of them would be playing the guitar, and the other one would be messing around with the pedals. It was a whole performance piece and film, and it was just very well done. It was cool to see Andy Warhol's commercial work, because I wasn't as familiar with that as I was with his later work that he's probably much more well known for. But he did a lot of advertisements for different stores. He did different storefront window displays. He did book covers. And it's nice to have a reminder of where people who you idolize or you look towards as experts, they all came from somewhere. So it's fun to see what his beginnings were, and then check out his later work. And the way that the museum is set up is in a way that you go all the way to the top floor and then you make your way down. And it starts with his first decades of work and goes into the future as you go down in the building. So it's a really cool museum. It was set up really well. I highly recommend it if you're in Pittsburgh. And of course you get to see big iconic pieces that take up the entire wall and are extremely showy and dramatic and 
full of pop culture references. That's what he's known for, you know? They even had some of his pieces that he did with Basquiat. A lot of people are big fans of Jean-Michel Basquiat now. They even had a piece by Caring, which was cool to see. I don't love all of his work. Sometimes he can be a bit too cheeky and I would not hang this in my house, but to each their own. After going to the museum, I wanted to walk around Pittsburgh and check out the rest of the area that I was in. So I did just that. And of course I found some coffee. The entire city seems to be very artistic and creatively inclined and there were actually a surprising number of public art pieces, I guess, or people who decided to make their houses into art pieces. This is just a little sampling of those. And that was it for Pittsburgh. I was then on to my next destination. Where was the next stop, you might ask? Well, it definitely was not in Ohio. I drove for so long through the state of Ohio and no offense, Ohio, but driving through on the highway is one of the most boring things I've ever done. It was mostly soybeans and it was pretty. At least it was a beautiful day. I wasn't driving through the snow or the rain, but it was so boring. Except that I saw this old car, and then I saw this cool old car, and then you'll never believe it, I saw this guy. Was it the same guy? Was it the same guy from before? We'll never know. I hope so. I hope it was that same guy. But you know, when you're driving along on a road trip, there's gonna be some boring stretches, and you just gotta entertain yourself and get through it, because sooner rather than later, you'll be making it to your next destination. <laughs>